a very good morning and a warm welcome to you dear students to your history class today we will be studying chapter 6 conflict with the moguls now in the last class we had learned how shivaji established swaraj with the help of his companions he captured many forts you know about it and lastly what he did he defeated whom did he defeat children he defeated Afzal Khan, right? You're right. Now in this lesson, we shall go ahead and see what he did more. You can see in this picture at the back, Shivaji Maharaj is over here, and he is going with his army to defeat the Mughals. Why did he do it? What are the reasons, and what happened in the story? Let's go ahead and find out. Now in today's learning, you will come to know about. Shahista Khan's invasion, the Surat campaign, Jai Singh's invasion, Agra visit and escape, coronation of Shivaji, and campaign of the South. Please watch this video explanation very carefully. It's a very nice video. Lot of animated videos are there in it. It's compiled together to give you the full, very good explanation. in an animated way watch closely children you will enjoy it i'm sure you are going to love it good morning students as you all know very well we have already finished with the fifth chapter that is foundation of swaraj today we are going to start with the sixth chapter that is conflict with the mughals You all know very well. So far, Shivaji Maharaj has successfully fought the Adil Shahi, but for expanding the Swaraj, conflict with the Mughals was inevitable. The Mughals posed a great threat to the Swaraj. Even as to expand, Shivaji Maharaj trumped over this threat too. He regained his forts and territories from Mughals. He got himself crowned. He took up a campaign of the south. Shahista Khan's invasion In February 1660 Shahista Khan left from Ahmednagar and entered the Pune province He came to Shirwal via Supe Baramati and Hor He held the territory of the by sending small units of the army to the neighboring area He encamped at Chakad The Kilnedar of the fort of Chakan, Firangoji Narsara, offered a strong resistance to the Shahista Khan's army. Finally, the Mughals captured the fort of Chakan. Shahista Khan set up his camp at Lal Mahal in Pune. He sent his forces to the river of Pune. These forces routed the people. Two years had passed, but he would not think of leaving Pune. Naturally, this had an adverse effect on the people's morale. In these circumstances, Maharaj drew up a bold plan. On 5th April 1663, Shivaji Maharaj raided Lal Mahal. In this raid, Shahista Khan lost his fingers. He suffered great humiliation. He left Pune and shifted his camp to Aurangabad. He took the displacement of Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb transferred him to the province of Bengal. This successful attack on Shahista Khan had an impact on the people, and their faith in the capability of Maharaj was strengthened even further. Next, we move to the Surat campaign. Now, when I am talking of Surat campaign, children, let me tell you this was a place where Shivaji Maharaj got lots of wealth, and it was a great, great blow to Aurangzeb's prestige. In three years' time, Shahista Khan had raised large territories of Swaraj. It was necessary to for him to make good this loss. 
For this, Shivaji Maharaj had devised a plan to teach a lesson to mothers. Surat was a place like it was a big center and port under the Mughal control. The Dutch, the British and the French had their factories over there. Maximum revenue was being generated by the city for the emperors. It was a rich city. So, Shivaji Maharaj decided to march to Surat. Inayat Khan, the Subedar of Surat, could not put up any resistance to Shivaji Maharaj. Maharaj obtained plenty of wealth from Surat without bothering the common people. This campaign of Surat was completely successful. Jai Singh's invasion With a view to curbing the increasing activities of Shivaji Maharaj, curbing means hold back, Aurangzeb sent Mirza Raja Jai Singh, an experienced and powerful Rajput Sardar. Jai Singh came to Pune. He started rallying all the forces against Shivaji Maharaj. Rallying means reforming. To the Portuguese of Goa and Masai, the Dutch of Vengola, the British of Surat, and the Siddhis of Janjira, Jai Singh suggested that they should start a naval campaign against Maharaj. Jai Singh drew up a plan of capturing the forts in possession of Maharaj. Mughal forces were sent to various parts of the Swaraj. They ravaged the territories of the Swaraj. Maharaj endeavoured to resist the Mughals. Endeavour means try hard to achieve something. Jai Singh and Dilay Khan laid siege to the fort of Purandar. Siege means a military operation in which enemy forces surround the fort. When the Mughals put the fort of Purandar under siege, Muradbaki Deshpande fought with the greatest of courage. He died a hero's death. Considering the seriousness of the situation, Maharaj began talks for a treaty with Jai Singh. He met Jai Singh personally. A treaty between Jai Singh and Maharaj was signed in June 1665. This is known as the Treaty of Purandar. In accordance with the terms of the treaty, Maharaj gave to the Mughals 23 of his forts and the adjoining territories yielding an annual revenue of 4 lakh hans. He also assured the Mughals of help against the other Shahi. The treaty was ratified by Aurangzeb. Ratified means approved escape from Agra. Shivaji could not bear the increasing atrocities that Aurangzeb's soldiers were inflicting on his fellow people. He decided to withdraw his attacks on the Mughals for some time till everything cooled down. He went to see Raja Jai Singh who had approached him on Aurangzeb's behalf for a settlement. Jai Singh gave Shivaji a warm welcome. During their discussion, Shivaji politely asked Jai Singh whether he liked to work for the Mughal Emperor. Jai Singh had no answer to this question. In their agreement, Shivaji agreed to hand over 23 of his forts to Aurangzeb and also accepted to work for the Mughal Emperor. Along with his nine-year-old son Sambhaji and with his most trusted fellow men, he started for Agra to see the Emperor. No sooner did he reach the beautiful city, he became the topic of discussion for everybody. Everybody wanted to see this great man who had defied the rule of the emperor. When Shivaji arrived, Aurangzeb made him and his men stand amongst the common soldiers. Shivaji was furious. How dare you insult me? 
Do you remember, it is me who has made your life hell? He turned his back to the emperor and barged out to the palace along with his men and returned to his camp. The emperor was furious. Shivaji had insulted him. He immediately ordered Shivaji to be put under house arrest in his own camp. Shivaji realized that they were trapped. He was constantly trying to figure out ways to get out of the emperor's imprisonment along with young Shambhaji. His most trusted people were trying to chalk out a plan to escape. Shivaji suddenly had an idea. He told his followers his plan. It was a big risk. There was no other way. As decided, he sent a message to Aurangzeb asking him to relieve his men. He said, You don't need them here. You need me. Moreover, you will incur more expenses on their food and other things if they stay here. Let them go. I will stay back. Aurangzeb tried to figure out if Shivaji was planning something. But when he could not, he finally agreed to Shivaji's request. When one step of the plan was complete, Shivaji moved on to the next. He pretended to fall ill, severely ill, so much that he couldn't even get up from his bed. One day, he pretended to have severe pain in his stomach. Physicians came to see him, but could not treat him. His pain kept increasing. Aurangzeb heard about Shivaji's illness. Even he believed that Shivaji was seriously ill. Nobody had an idea about the plan that Shivaji had in mind. Aurangzeb received a message from Shivaji. I think my end is near. I don't think I will ever recover. I want to do something for the needy. I want to offer them food and sweets. I request your kind permission. Aurangzeb agreed to this too. Huge baskets filled with sweets started moving out of Shivaji's camp to be sent to the poor. They were checked thoroughly by the guards at the exit. The guards also used to pick up some sweets for themselves in the process. This became a regular habit. After some days, the guards got tired of checking the baskets and even eating sweets. They became careless. This was the time that Shivaji was waiting for. As usual, when one day the baskets came, two of them remained empty. Shivaji handed over his bracelets to Hiroji Farzad. He then got into one of the baskets and Hiroji took his place on the bed. Young Shambhaji got into another basket. Then, one by one, the baskets started moving out of the camp. After checking a couple of them, the guards let the others pass without inspection. Once outside the village, Shivaji and young Shambhaji got out of the baskets. His men were already waiting there with horses ready for the escape. Here, at the camp, the security in charge Fulat Khan and his men used to occasionally peep inside Shivaji's tent. And on seeing Hiroji lying on the in charge, Fulat Khan and his men used to occasionally peep inside Shivaji's tent. And on seeing Hiroji lying on the bed, they mistook him for Shivaji. After a while, Hiroji and Madari got ready for their next move. They placed cushions on the bed and covered them with blankets. Both of them came out of the tent. The guards stopped them and asked them, where were they going? They explained 
that Shivaji's pain had increased and that they were going to the village to fetch medicine. Quickly, they dispersed into the night. The next day, when the guards came inside to check, they found nobody there. They were taken aback. Shivaji had disappeared. They searched every corner, but it was of no use. Fulat Khan was dumbfounded when he realized what had happened. He couldn't figure out how Shivaji had got out of there. He still could not believe that Shivaji had escaped. He was trembling at the thought how Aurangzeb would react when he got the news. When Aurangzeb got the news, he was flabbergasted. How on earth could Shivaji get past such heavy security? But it was too late. Shivaji had made a fool out of them. He and his men were safely on their way towards Puri. Escape The Coronation Ceremony The Coronation Ceremony the coronation day dawned. It was indeed the most auspicious day. Musicians began to play on their instruments. Singers began to sing and music and singing filled the air. There was an atmosphere of joy everywhere. Shivaji Raja sat on a golden seat in full regalia, including the canopy, that is the chhatra, and the pants, that is the chhamri. There were priests, each one carrying ghee, honey, and curds. Gaga Bhatt himself carried a gold vessel filled with the waters of the seven rivers Ganga, Sindhu, Yamuna, Godavari, Krishna, Narmada and Kaveri. Gaga Bhatt held the vessel over Shivaji's head and started reciting the coronation mantras. From a hundred tiny holes in the vessel, water of the seven rivers started dripping down on Shivaji's head. After ablutions by the sacred waters, Shivaji Maharaj got up and bowed before Jija Mata and touched her feet. Jija Mata held him in close embrace. Her eyes were filled with tears of joy. Her 30 years efforts had at last borne fruit. The dream she had nursed even before Shivaji's birth had at last come true. The tears in her eyes were tears of joy and fulfillment. Shivaji Maharaj was also deeply moved. Glory be to both of them. As we come to an end of the chapter, that is the campaign to the south, three years after the coronation, in October 1677, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj undertook a campaign of the south. He went to Golconda. There he called on the Kutub Shah. He entered into treaty of friendship with him. Later, Maharaj won Bangalore, Haskot in Karnataka, Jinji, Vellore, etc. For forts in today's which are there in Tamil Nadu and some other territories of Adil Shah. 
He appointed Raghunath Narayan Hanmante, the chief administrator, to look after these conquered territories. Vyankuji, the half brother of Shivaji Maharaj, was then ruling Tanjavur. Shivaji Maharaj tried to get him to his side for the different activities of Swaraj. After Vyankuji Raje, the ruler of Tanjavur encouraged art and learning. The Saraswati Mahal Library, which is world famous there. In this campaign of the South, Maharaj had annexed the fort of Jinji in Tamil Nadu to his Swaraj. This proved to be of great importance in the later years. Now when the Mughals lived here in Maharashtra to destroy Swaraj, at that time Chhatrapati Rajana Maharaj had to leave Maharashtra only for his safety and he took shelter in Jinji and he ran the administration of Swaraj from there. Soon after the victorious campaign of the South, Shivaji Maharaj passed away in Raigad on 3rd April 1680. His death at the age of 50 was a great loss for Swaraj. Now as we come to an end of the chapter, let me remind you that the notes will be sent to you after this. At the same time, I want to remind you that your test, second, uh, second test will be on 29th of August. So be well prepared for it. So students, you have understood the full chapter, I am sure of it. Thank you.